to go get groceries and he's been trying to buy a propane what, is, what are those things called propane, propane tank propane tank for this whole entire day but he hasn't been able to find one and he got his barbecue yesterday and we had like this really bad barbecue buying experience because well to him it was a very bad experience because he went in to buy a barbecue and I was like okay sure just get whatever barbecue you want whatever he's like oh I've done all this research and then when we were buying the barbecue the guy refused to give us a discount and I was like well I'm not buying a barbecue without a discount <laughs> Yeah, they just don't have discounts. Yeah, they don't give discounts apparently when you buy a barbecue anyway. So I walked out the store. I was like, nope, I'm not buying a barbecue without a discount. And then he got very frustrated and mad that, you know, he went in, he told the guy I was going to buy a barbecue and they already started booking the delivery and stuff. And that was like, nope, I'm not buying it without a discount. That's it. And then eventually he was like, okay, then you go get the barbecue. And then I got really lazy and I didn't end up getting the barbecue. And... And then I was like, okay, just go back to that place and just buy it. I, I don't care anymore. Just go back and no, do it. No, you didn't get lazy. You just couldn't get a discount. No, I didn't. I, I tried calling and then like they didn't call me back. So whatever, well, you know. just don't give discounts. You know what? It's okay. Reason. Especially it's locked down right now. Everyone wants to, everyone wants to stay home, right? And well, I shouldn't say everyone wants to stay home. Everyone has to stay home. And when you're stuck at home, you want to do something, uh, you know, in your backyard. Barbecue is just one of them. Yeah. And there is going to be a very high demand for barbecue uh, or like any type of backyard equipment. Seriously. Yeah, so that's what he's saying anyway. So, um, so yeah, so we ended up getting the barbecue from that guy, but we never went in. So he just did a phone order because he didn't want to embarrass himself by going back in after we walked out of the store. Which makes sense, I get it. I mean like whatever. And then, so the barbecue arrived yesterday and now he's been on the hunt for a propane tank so we can use the barbecue. And right now we're actually going to the grocery store to buy like food that we can barbecue tonight but we have no tank. <laughs> what I really want to talk to you guys about today was about our what we've been doing recently and kind of like our house hunting journey. So the beginning of this year, I don't think I ever told you guys this, but we were on the hunt for a new house. I wanted to move out of my house because you know everything was getting a bit old and we were looking to change up our lifestyle, getting something new, getting a bigger home. So our current house is about like 2,000, 500? 800, 800 square feet. So we wanted to upgrade to something around the lines of maybe like 5,000 square feet. So we were house hunting for about like a month or two months or three months, probably three months and then eventually we gave up. Toronto housing market is so hot right now. It's like pretty much impossible to get a house. And you know like our budget is not like a very small budget either. I would say it's like a pretty big, big Significantly budget. Significantly yeah. higher than average Significantly, okay, yes. So like our current house is probably about like two point something million dollars. So if we were to switch, we would switch upwards. Oh, propane tank. Propane tank. See, I told you like gas stations have propane. Now you have to go and cancel your Lowe's order. Which I certainly can. Yeah, let's just buy this propane tank. We found a propane tank. Ah. <gasps> So let me continue with my story while he's getting the propane tank. So basically like we were looking for a house about like maybe 3 million ish to upwards of 4 million I would say is still kind of acceptable. It's really pushing it. I would probably prefer around like 2.9 to like 3.5 kind of range and at the same time we wanted kind of like a house with a bigger lot so maybe like a one acre kind of lot so we were looking pretty much up north like King City, Stouffville or even Markham but Markham is kind of expensive you would have to get like a smaller piece of land or get a bungalow with a bigger piece of land so anyways we were looking kind of really far north away from like the city away from Toronto which is okay because we're kind of used to living up north the first house we saw it was a delisted house because we couldn't find the exact house we wanted and this was back in January so there wasn't like a lot of houses on the market so there was a delisted house and I had contacted the agent and like was asking them if they were still right. on the market to sell yes it's all sold out it's all sold out oh wow okay there are so. empty tanks in there oh you can't buy an empty tank no you have to this is more like an exchange program you buy a full tank and next time you bring it out bring it to exchange for another full tank okay i see they don't sell empty ones okay so anyways that i was talking about another gas sure i was talking about this uh 
what was I talking about? So I was talking about the first house we were looking at where we, it was that yellow looking house. Remember that yellow looking house where it was delisted? And I'm gonna put, put some pictures up here just for your references, guys. And this house was delisted. It delisted at 3.2 or 3.3 million. It's about like one and a half acre or one acre. It's 4,000 something or probably 5,000. It was over 5,000 square feet, around 5,000. Um, the guy had like renovated his house and did all this upgrades and work on his house, but it wasn't like our perfect house. We would have to go in and do some further renovations and stuff. So he asked for 3.3 and we were like, okay, well, like, expensive homes doesn't really go for much these days and we offered him three million dollars now that's actually not a ridiculous price from what he had asked for previously like he wasn't able to sell it this last whole entire year nobody wanted to buy his house even for 3.3 or like even under so so this guy gives us back a price of 3.9 million and we're just like are you like out of your mind so in the same neighborhood we were looking um, we found this other house and they were asking for 2.9 something so we started like bargaining with them or like however you go back and forth and negotiate so I think I gave them 2.6 and they didn't even bother offering us back didn't even bother talking to us so we're like okay we're gonna like wait a while until you guys realize your market value because your house is like 20 something years old the windows have not been updated the roof has not been updated like everything in the house is like the original condition yeah the pool is like broken everything is like broken and it's just really bad condition and you know like everything was green yellow like pink like all kinds of random color the house was like nice it's very well built but the biggest problem was that it's just not updated and it's not maintained well so for that house, we were like, okay, maybe if we get it for 2.6, 2.7, or even like at the end, I was like upwards to 2.8, um, we can like maybe spend like half a million dollars updating the house and it would be, it would be okay, right? Like it would be a nice house for us to live in. It was about 5,000 something square feet with four bedrooms, which is plenty and enough for, for all of us to live in. So anyways, that didn't go very well. So we were like, okay, we're gonna wait a bit. During that time we were waiting, we kind of looked at a few other houses. Yep. And then we came up to this beautiful, magnificent home. And <laughs> it was way above what we kind of wanted to spend on a house. I think they asked for 4.4 million. 4.4 or 4.5? 4.5 million. So I was like, $4 million houses, really hard to sell. And this lady's been trying to sell her house for the past, what, Two year million. and a half, two years almost, and it hasn't sold. So we were like, okay, well, we'll just take a look. It's probably gonna be a house that we're never gonna buy. But when we actually went to the house, oh my God, it was so nice. Other than the fact that it didn't really have much of a backyard, it had like a side yard. Um, but the house was very well built and it was very nice. It was 12,000 square feet, including the basement. So it's about like 8,000 or 9,000 square feet like upstairs and it was really, big so that like their master bedroom was on the first floor so E's parents were able to live in that master while we probably stayed in a room upstairs and then there was this giant like recreational loft on top of their four four car garage so this house was actually perfect for us because we can have like our separate corners and our separate areas away from the kids as well as away from his parents so we started like you know try to buy this house and we're like okay maybe 4.1 4.2 4.3 we were we were okay with paying that it's kind of out of our budget but like we'll we'll stick it through and yeah make but it it's happen. not about the price at that point yeah so we were kind of like telling the agent that we had a two-day period where if we land a deal we'll, we'll buy the house and if we don't then we won't buy the house and magically somehow while we were trying to bid on this house three other people started bidding with us at the same time and the agent was like okay so we got all these offers so we're just gonna ask you guys for your best offer so put in your best offer and if you get it you get it if you don't then whatever so E and I are both not the type of person who like to submit like best offers and try to fight with people for a house we gave them 4.1 for our best offer and we were like we're not going up from there because initially we gave them 4 million for our initial offer and then we gave them the 4.1 and the agent started calling back to us it's like okay can you guys go higher blah, blah blah and crap and started talking to me literally throughout the whole night and i pretty much made it pretty clear that i wasn't going to go up but then we did want to rent a place while we were selling our house it's kind of complicated so i was like okay I'm gonna give you guys another $50,000 from 4.1, but that's going to be run for three months while we lived in your house while we tried to sell ours. 
so the agent was like okay I'm gonna go talk to the to the owners and see what they say and then eventually the next day the owners called us back and started asking for more money like we landed at 4.2 and then we were gonna make the offer happen but at 4.2 we were like okay we need to write in the three months like rental contract and they were like no we're not renting the house for two guys for three months like you can't rent the house blah blah, blah all this like legal issues and all these issues so we're like okay makes sense whatever then like you know we're gonna deduct fifty thousand dollars from this because this is what we agreed on when we initially gave it to the agent and then apparently there's like a lot of miscommunications here and there and stuff and then they did not agree to the fifty thousand dollars being the rental and then we're like okay this is just stupid like i don't want to pay four million something dollar like for a house and go through all this bullshit with you guys right so in the end i gave them 4.19 so which is ten thousand dollars off from the agreed upon price as like a sign back offer for them to confirm and sign and they refused to sign it so we were like okay whatever like we're not gonna bother with this house anymore and the no, next look, day Teddy, the agent called us you, back you don't understand okay yeah. so there are a couple of things happening in this transaction that's why when you sell or buy a house, you have to find an agent who is good, but more importantly, trustworthy. The house ended up getting sold, and we know this because the agent told me to his friend. Okay. So he's purposely doing stuff in the middle, miscommunication, you can call it, or whatever the case is, trying not to sell it to us because a friend wants it, but his friend is not willing to pay for more than 4.1 as a matter of fact the final price was 4.08 4 yeah they sold it for 4.08 so, so essentially the agent i don't know what the agreement is maybe the agent is like look friend you give me 220 grand i'll make sure you pay less for this house right makes and sense he probably saw oh two years nobody offered on this house no way it's gonna go through right yeah turn out we stepped in he's like now he's panicking he's like what do i do right like i promised my friend i'm gonna make this money under the table but nothing's happening right that's just one theory all right it's I don't know the truth, but I did know that the final buyer is the friend of the the, the seller's agent, okay. which is a total conflict of interest. I don't even know how we got there, but the most important part is at the end of the day, the seller lost 120, 110. sorry, 110k thousand dollars. Yeah, just because you know she listened she, to her agent and did not sell us the house. No, more like or like she just, whatever crap happened in the middle. No, she just she just didn't find the agent that she trusts it's partially her fault too because she couldn't sell the house for a year she switched agent you know and whatever i think she didn't show enough trust in the agent's ability to sell it but she didn't understand that yes ability is very important but trustworthiness is a yeah. lot more important right right they probably also thought we were going to be the buyers because we already offered them 4.2 and the agent literally called me and said why are you being so cheap on ten thousand dollars i'm like okay then you can go and pay that ten thousand dollars yourself because i'm not paying for it we were now going back to our original house which was asking for 2.9 but now they increased their price to 3.2 and we're like okay we'll just we'll just give them whatever they wanted originally which was 2.98 i think nine seven or nine, nine seven eight. or nine eight sure. and then we're like okay we'll just buy this house and get it over with whatever yeah we're tired of and then we talked to the agent they all agreed on the prize everything was good they were like okay submit the offer and we'll sign it back blah blah, blah. And then next day, I think like we made the mistake of giving them too much time. So next day, they didn't sign it back. We're like, okay, so they have to sign it back by tonight because that's when the offer expires. So by like the afternoon, no, by the nighttime, like at 8 p.m., they were like, okay, there's another buyer. Now there's two of you guys, so you guys give your best friend but best price again and we're just like okay we already gave you what you're asking or like what you wanted i don't think we want to give you more so at the end we didn't give them like another offer that was already our best offer to them mm -hmm. and then i think eventually they sold it for ten thousand dollars more than what we paid them for like what we offer so that was that we lost that house as well so by the end of that we were like okay why are we even bothering to switch a house like paying all this transaction fees paying all this agent fee and going through all this work and like re-renovating another house so at the end we finally decided that we were gonna what renovate our basement yep which is what i'm going to do and i'll vlog about that like the only downside about our basement is that it's like seven and a half feet so it's very short but the good thing is that it is a walkout basement so if we change a lot of the windows and stuff it'll feel kind of like a first floor of a regular house if that makes sense to you guys but i'll show you guys more of that as i start renovating and show you guys more of that well let's head over yep. to the grocery stores the grocery and store. go get our stuff
What barbecue sauce do you want? I want like a Montreal sauce. It's huge. Sirloin. That looks nice. Oh, that's because it's got bones in it. Like the marble in there. Yeah, marbling is actually better on this one. Maybe we should get this. Fresh beef T-bone? Yeah. Not T-bone? Yeah. Sure. Like that middle piece. One, two, three. Third piece. Third piece? You just want one piece? Yeah. At least by two. One. I think it's good enough for us. There's a burger over here. No, I want it. Uh, There's ones here, large burger, beef. Beef and lamb, lamb though. I want pure beef there. Oh, cheese geez. and bacon on it too. Perfect. Oh, it comes with cheese and bacon? I guess it does. Just finished grocery shopping, and right now I'm just waiting in the car for E while he does something. And I just wanted to quickly show you guys my new bag. I'm so happy that I got a new bag. Um, I think this this is the first bag that I got in 2021 so it's quite exciting because it's something that I've always wanted and the reason why I'm so awkwardly positioned like this right now is because this is the only spot where I can kind of like clip on the camera onto the car so it's like a lopsided view of myself but here's my new bag oh my god guys this is this is the best thing I think I bought this year so far I actually got this um January or February, I can't remember, but it's part of the spring and summer collection. And this is, uh, there goes my phone. My phone will always tend to fall in between the cracks. There is like no light. I, I don't understand why and how this light works. From the spring and summer collection, I believe. And it's this beautiful white Chanel flap and it has the Jumping. gold ball that's the dream of everybody. Everybody's dream is to have the flat bag with the gold ball and I finally got it. I think I would have also loved this bag in black and I think if I, I am able to get another one in the future, I might get another one of this in black because because I just think that the flexible like adjustment with the gold ball is just really really convenient because you can adjust it to any length you want and let me tell you guys this bag is like made vintage and you can't see me I'm a giant big black blob right now but he is going to drive with my lopsided camera like I have to talk like this because my camera is so lopsided but this yeah probably will because you're driving now and this one is 5,000 5, something Canadian. E is here, so I don't want to disclose the price. <laughs> I don't think he knows how much this one costed. But um, so it is a bit more expensive. <laughs> it's a bit more expensive than the um, regular Chanel flap, uh, the square flap, because it has the gold ball. Um, but I think it's worth every penny. And this sure. leather is actually... <laughs> <laughs> It's worth every penny. You don't think so? You don't like this bag? No, I don't think any bag's worth a penny. But every penny. yeah, this one is basically the same as the regular square flap. Um, yeah, same features, and then it's like gold on the inside. I'm trying to show you guys while E is driving. It's uh, gold on the inside. I just have my mask inside because I don't need to bring anything. We're going grocery shopping. But I brought a bag anyways because I want to have a chance to take it out because I rarely have a chance to take it out. My my bag is kind of like creasing right here. I've actually have it sitting in my cabinet for like two months now and it's kind of just creasing a little bit. Guys, I just took a look and I think I colored the back already. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it has this faint blue color over here. And I've been trying to wipe it away with my saliva, but it's not coming off. So very, very sad. I don't know if this is from the dust bag because they give you the black Chanel dust bag. And I don't know if it's like just a bad quality dust bag that the color comes through, like the color kind of transfers, or it could have been my jeans, but I honestly have not used this bag. I probably used it twice and yeah, it got dirty already. So I mean like, don't get a white one. It's it's probably not worth it to get a white one. It gets so dirty, but I mean like the white one is really, really cute, but yeah, they got dirty already. So I am very, very sad and you can't even take it off. Oh my God, so sad. Just use the white out. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, use white out on my bag. Thank you, yes. We came to another gas station and he finally got lucky and got a propane can.
happy with your new barbecue? So far, yes. We shall see once we use it. What if it's not good? Return it. We can return it? No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> so this part is for searing the steak, didn't you say? Yep. Kind of looks like those Japanese uh, web looking things. No, this is the infrared system. It's different than the regular burner. Look, if you put it here in this thing, so you'll level, make it higher, and what you do is you sear the steak here, right? But where did the oil go? Uh, it has an oil pan that will go down. But anyways, but it's just for searing, so it's quick, right? So if you lower it, like put it into this hole here, then it's like a almost like a gas stove. You can just boil or like fry stuff. Okay, well, I want to see some serious barbecue in the summer after you get the squirrel -y. I don't see you doing a serious bag going out. With bag your going out? Like going out and dancing around with my bags? <laughs> yep. I seriously look in the mirror every time I buy a bag. Wow. Yeah, this is basically the back of our house. It's very boring and full of brick, but we do live in a bungalow, so you guys can see. Just like a one level thing that's our neighbor with their very fancy backyard and patio over there. And they have two stories, but we only have one story. And then we have like a basement, which is down there. And I'll show you guys more like another time, but we're looking to redo the basement. And then we're gonna live downstairs and then there's gonna be an entertaining area down there. I think when they renovate this time, we really need to get them to remove this. Yeah, let's uh, get it up. It's like so ugly. I don't know why we didn't remove it earlier. It's, it's so beautiful. stupid, right? So we got this table and you guys know originally we got this RH patio set for outside and it was so expensive, it was $20,000 and like birds were pooing on my patio set so I brought it inside and now it's our living room furniture but I think I do need to get like maybe a cheap like, like a wicker type of set for over here with a carpet and then get some kind of like fake you know trees or fake greenery somewhere He is currently searing his steak. Looks pretty good. You should send our friends a picture so they will come for barbecue next time. We have to use these alluring pictures to send to our friends so they can come join us. I mean like it's lockdown right now so no one's gonna join us. But in the future, once we get out of lockdown, we can have a barbecue party. Oh look, it's little Jake. Oh, you're a little bit of 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 a little bit of
，看起来不错啊，叔叔。嗯、小心啊，他在你后面。Pretty impressive. I am starting to like this barbecue. No, Jake. No. Put a more. This is very hot. Let's put an alpha tag to warm up. We're back at the gas station where we got the propane, and we ran out of propane. So I don't know if it's because E took like a more empty one, and it wasn't a brand new one or something. But we barbecued for about half an hour, and then we ran out of propane. So now we are back to this gas place, and he got someone to help him out to maybe grab him the proper propane that he needs. Bye, bye, bye. You say, "Mama," call "Mama." This one, you can tell everyone to talk. Okay, he's too sidetracked right now by looking at his dad trying to switch the propane. Jake is finally asleep in the other room, and you know I can finally have my peaceful evening and have a bit of time to myself now. And because we are renovating our basement, well, planning to renovate our basement, so we started cleaning out everything. And E has moved out from the basement, and he has taken over my office space on the main floor. So now I basically. Um, stay in our room, so the room has become like my office, as well as like where I hang out with myself, as well as where I sleep and like do all the stuff that I need. So I kind of just have this one room to myself now. It kind of almost feels like I'm back in university, where I used to just like live in one one room and do everything in one room. So if you guys are wondering what I'm doing, I'm actually doing my nighttime like eye treatment. So this is. Actually, honestly, the perfect time for me to talk to you guys because I have to do this for literally like 15 minutes, and I do this because I kind of realized that my skin was getting really bad. It was getting to a really, really bad condition because I was getting a lot of wrinkles and like just different like problems with my skin. So I kind of looked into products, you know, that would kind of help with my skin. And there's a lot of like. Different kind of treatments that you can get, like with injections and stuff. And there's also a lot of like these kind of equipment that can kind of help and ease your problem. So there was a lot of like different recommendations and stuff. And in the end, I got this brand, which is called Tripolar. And this one, they also have like a face slimming one. And I'm probably going to get that one next because I was reading on Xiaohongshu a lot, and a lot of people use that to kind of like lift their face a little bit and kind of rejuvenate their skin on their face. But this one I got is a cheaper version, and it's the eye and facial kind of lines, like a miniature version of the large one. But I've actually been using this for over a month and a half now, and I actually really like it. So what you do is that you put a little bit of this um, their preparation balm around the area that you're gonna treat, and I do this like at the night. Yes, in the night. So maybe like. Uh, three, four times a week. I'm pretty lazy when it comes to these things. You should probably do it every day, but I do it like three, four times a week. And then you put the balm around your eye, and then you just use this to row around. And it has this like very warm sensation after you start rolling it. And what I realize is the next day when I wake up, my eyes don't feel as tired because sometimes when I'm looking at the computer all day or looking at my phone all day, my eyes feel really, really tired by the end of the night. And then the next day when I wake up, it kind of hurts a little bit, like around my eye or like my eyeball kind of hurts a little bit. I don't know if you guys get that feeling at all. So afterwards, I started using this and I realized like after I sleep and I wake up, it's very Uh, it's like it feels really nice, so it's very soothing, and my eyes feels very relaxed. At the same time, you can feel that like your eyes, like the skin around your eyes, is a little bit more juicy. I don't know if that's the correct word to describe it, but you can feel like it's a bit more plump, and there's more like water content in it, and it just overall feels more firm and it feels nicer. So that's what I really, really like about about using. Like these kind of equipment, these kind of technology, because I think it's it's doing really just doing wonders to my skin. While I typically do this, I just watch TV or something because it is a long process and it's kind of boring when you're doing something like this. But it really helps, so that's the the reason why I continue to do it. But if you guys are like me, you're in your 30s and 
you're looking for solutions to help your skin and kind of like um like diminish the effects of aging i would highly recommend like getting equipments like tripolar or other equipment that you want to try out because it's actually pretty useful and you guys can also look into like some anti-aging cream with retinol b i believe it's retinol b uh, content inside which will help prevent and ease wrinkles i also do the same thing around my nose area where there's this like facial line and i really don't like the facial line i like to be more plumb around the area so i think it's really important to kind of massage this area and do the treatment here as for the other products that i'm using now for my nighttime routine it's actually quite simple first thing i use is the serum and before this i've actually gone to the washroom and i applied an eye cream and i've also done like the um drunken elephant uh nighttime serum the pink one which is my all-time favorite because it helps me get rid of my dead skins and kind of like rejuvenate my skin a little bit so the thing that i was doing wrong before with the dark Rote products is that you have to use a con pad it's a little bit wasteful but you have to use a con pad when you're using their products because apparently um i don't know why but it's it's supposed to work better and it helps the product go on your skin a little bit better and wipes off a little bit better so use a cotton pad and just put the moisturizer all over your face and i add a little bit on my neck as well and then on the same cotton pad because i don't like to waste my cotton pads um i just put the lotion on not the lotion sorry the water so typically you put the toner before you do the lotion and all the steps but this is not really like a toner this is just like a moisturizing water and the water will always go on after you apply the moisturizer so i'm just applying the water on honestly i find that the way that this is applied is very very weird but for some odd reason the next day i wake up my skin feels like it feels very supple and very soft and it feels kind of like baby skin and you feel like there's so much moisture in your skin and it's just very elastic and very very supple so this this thing honestly i've tried out so many different creams and so many different brands but this is my all-time favorite and i don't think i'm switching out of this routine because it just does wonders for my skin it's just so good i used to actually apply the water when i first started using this brand um before the moisturizer and before you know this um serum and it wasn't until i watched a youtube video that i realized that i'm doing this whole step thing wrong and the fact that you have to use a cotton pad afterwards i started doing it the right way and it was so different it was so different than how my skin was before so honestly if you guys want really nice like baby feeling skin in your 20s or in your early 30s i would totally recommend this go go and buy this and you guys will see it makes a huge huge difference on your skin so definitely go try that out this video has been very very long already so i'm going to end the video here and i will see you guys next time you hide when you fall down